Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Apple Galette. Now today we're going to be baking up one of my favorite holiday treats, it's the apple galette, which you can essentially think of as a freeform pie. The same apple filling that you love from an apple pie, but without that pie pan involved. Now you can do these in any size you want, big or small. Today we're doing individual ones, which make for really great little treats if you're handing them out to family or to friends, or you can do them as individual desserts at dinner. So we're going to kick off this recipe by making our pat brise or our pie dough. And that's going to start with two and a quarter sticks of unsalted butter. This butter has been in the freezer overnight, so it's super cold. And that's really important when you're making your pie dough, because you want to keep that butter really cold. Now I'm just going to roughly dice this down. You could use a knife, of course, but a bench scrape will work just as well. It doesn't have to be perfect. But we're going to work these butter chunks into our flour until we get a mealy texture. Speaking of our flour, we have about seven ounces each of cake and all-purpose flour. That's about a cup and a half each. We're using two different types of flour to get a little bit more tender pie dough. You could also, also use a pastry flour, but if you only have all-purpose, it's going to turn out just fine. So we're going to do this in the stand mixer. You can also do it in a food processor, which goes even a little bit quicker. We're going to be using the paddle attachment today. Just want to start out kind of over a low speed, mixing this and breaking up the butter. You can see we have some pretty large chunks of butter now. We want those to work down until they're about pea-sized or smaller. This process is going to take about five minutes probably, uh, but once we've got this started, I'm going to go ahead and add in some of our sugar as well as our salt. We're doing two and a quarter ounces of sugar, which is about five and a half tablespoons and three quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. All right, so we're kind of getting to that consistency that I want to show you guys where we've got this mealy texture. It's kind of changed the texture of the flour. Our biggest chunks are no bigger than pea sized, which is important because we want these chunks to exist in the dough itself, they will, when that, when that melts during the baking process, they create some gas and it makes that flakiness. So we want those chunks in there, but if they're too big, our dough will just tear right through. So that's why we're looking for pea-sized. If I squeeze this now, it already starts to hold together just a little bit, but we need a little more hydration, so we're gonna add a couple of eggs. And we'll just do each one of our eggs one at a time. Let that fully incorporate. And you'll start to see this dough come together. So our last egg. Keeping it on low speed now and just watching our dough start to come together as the flour is hydrated by the eggs. It may take just a minute or two, but what you're gonna find is that Everything starts clumping together, and those clumps start to get bigger and bigger as the dough is formed. And once we've got to that point where it looks like this is pretty much a pie dough that'll hold together, I'm gonna shut it down. So that's what we're looking for. It's come together really nice. We don't have any huge chunks of butter that I can see right now. So we're gonna form this into a rectangle place it in the fridge to rest before we roll it out for our galettes. You could actually finish the kneading by hand, but I like to just let it finish all the way up in the mixer there and then just press the dough into a rectangle shape. It should be dense. You're trying to eliminate any big air pockets. We'll go for about one inch thick square of dough here, a rectangle. It's important that we try to make this as even as possible so that it rolls out evenly later on. So I'm going to dust that with just a little bit of flour. Throw some plastic on it and put it in the fridge to rest for at least 30 minutes before we try and roll it out. So this portion of the recipe, making the actual pat brise, the pie dough, you can do this even a couple of days in advance and leave it in the fridge 
or you can go ahead and throw it in the freezer and it'll be good in there for a month or two. So now we've got our pie dough resting in the fridge. We're gonna put together the apple pie filling. I'm gonna start with two pounds of Granny Smith apples that we're gonna get peeled and diced up. I like to take the tops and bottoms off of these. It makes it really easy to peel. I'll show you guys here in just a moment. So now you can just take your peeler, go top to bottom over and over and over again. And this is about the quickest way I've found to peel an apple. And then we're just going to cut around the core here and take these down into yeah, sort of a medium large dice. Something that can cook down just a little bit and hold its structure as the galette cooks and not be so fine that it just disappears into the filling. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to get the zest and the juice off of this lemon. Uh, I wanna use both of these to really brighten up this filling. And this is a very bright citrusy apple pie filling. Thanks to the lemon zest and then eventually the lemon juice which we're also going to mix in with some bourbon. I wanna take about half of this lemon zest and then we're also going to juice half of the lemon. So just using your microplane, taking off that very thin yellow layer on the surface. That's what you get. And I really only need about a tablespoon of lemon juice, so it shouldn't take more than a half a lemon to get that. Just a little bit more. So that does it for the fruit. We're gonna get a couple tablespoons of butter in our skillet. We've got the Lodge 10 inch skillet, should be just about the right size. We're gonna fill it up. Just going over medium heat here. Before we add the apples, we wanna get the butter melted down. So come in first with our diced apples, and then we're gonna start adding our sugar and spices. We've got two thirds of a cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, and then one half teaspoon as well of our noble whiskey smoked salt. We'll stir just to move things around and then we're going to start to see the juice is released from the apple, which is why we're going to be adding a thickener. In that case today, we're using cornstarch. So we need to make a cornstarch slurry that's going to thicken our apple pie filling. But before we get to that, one more thing I wanna add, a little bit of vanilla bean. Now these can be a little bit expensive, but if you get your hands on one, they add some really amazing flavor to your apple pie filling. You can always substitute for a vanilla extra extract using about a teaspoon or so, uh, but we're actually gonna use the vanilla bean itself. So what you wanna do is split it open and then take the back of your knife and just scrape the inside of that pod. And that's the vanilla bean that gives that amazing vanilla flavor. Now we're really seeing those juices come out, so we're gonna make our slurry. We're starting with that tablespoon of lemon juice. We're gonna add to that a tablespoon of bourbon. And honestly, you could just use water if you want. You can skip the bourbon, you can skip the lemon juice, but I actually really like the flavor that these add. We're gonna add an equal amount, two tablespoons of cornstarch. We'll just mix to dissolve the cornstarch, and then we're immediately gonna get it back into the skillet. And you can see how the juices are bubbling away there. And we don't want to fully cook these apples because they are going to bake once we get them inside the pie dough. So that's why we're going to try and thicken these up and leave some texture behind so that the apples can continue to cook without becoming mush on the grill. And this cornstarch, it just takes a minute or two to really start thickening the sauce. And what you will get is that really incredible citrusy cinnamon brown sugar sauce that just coats these apples. So we're looking for these bubbles to get larger and larger for that liquid to be thicker and thicker so that when we pull a spoon through here, see how it just slowly fills back in? That's how we know that we've got a really nice consistency for our apple pie filling. Now one more thing we're gonna add is that lemon zest that we took off of the half lemon. This doesn't need to cook at all and the residual heat 
that's already in that pie filling is going to open up all those aromas and flavors. So we'll just add it right here at the end. All right, let's get a taste. Woo. I love how bright it is. The lemon really makes this apple pie filling, but you're getting that pure vanilla bean flavor in there as well. The cinnamon, all the things you think of when you think of apple pie, but it's so fresh and so bright. But the dough's had time to chill out and relax, so we're gonna roll it out nice and thin for our galettes. To start with a well-floured work surface, we don't want any sticking. Got our slab of dough. I'm gonna make it a little bit easier to work with by dividing it in half. And then I'm just gonna get in here with my rolling pin. We're gonna to start to work this thing out. And pretty much anything we do in one direction, we wanna do evenly in the other direction. So we roll this thing out as evenly as possible. We're gonna to look to get about six to eight four inch galette shells out of this. So we need to go a little bit thinner yet. This is still a little thicker than what I really want, but we're gonna keep that in mind is that we're looking for six to eight rounds initially. And you can actually reuse the scraps to get a few more later. But for this first part, six to eight four inch rounds. And what we're gonna do is just take a container that's about four inches around, take our knife and cut right around the perimeter there. So those look really nice. We haven't had much resistance rolling this dough out, but if I was seeing a lot of pullback right now, as far as how the dough reacts when we roll it out, you'd want to give it a little bit longer to rest before cutting these out. And that's not a bad idea, but for the sake of getting these formed for you guys, we're just going to keep rolling with it right now. All right, so now we're going to get our filling onto our rounds. Got a little scoop here that measures out about two tablespoons at a time, which is just right for the size that we're doing. So now to fully assemble these, what we're gonna do is just pinch our dough in here, create a little crease. We're gonna work our way around until we have roughly about six to seven sided galette just like that. So just pinch, move, fold all the way around and then place those on the sheet pan. Can't tell you how many times I've done this process working back at Ken's Artisan Bakery in Portland, Oregon. This was one of my favorite desserts that we served there. It's been one of my favorites to make every fall ever since. All right, the galettes are just about ready to go. We're just gonna mix up a little bit of egg wash here with a single egg and a couple teaspoons of milk. Give us a nice browning, a little bit of shine on the outside and something for our sugar to stick to because we are gonna top these with a smoked maple turbinado. But it doesn't take a lot. And we're not trying to make scrambled eggs, so don't pile it on there and let it collect at the base. You just want a nice light coating of egg wash. All right, and while that egg wash is still fresh, we're gonna hit the edges of the dough here with our smoked maple turbinado sugar. Great little bit of texture and flavor to add to the dough. They're looking pretty good. Let's get them on the grill. Today we'll be baking our apple galettes on the Yoder Smokers YS640S. It's running at 375 degrees. Slide this right up top here. We're gonna wait for the bottoms to start to brown. The top will get a little bit golden brown and you'll really see this crust will look nice and flaky and the center should be bubbling. Well, it's been about 45 minutes now that our galettes have been cooking away. They're looking nice and brown on the bottom. The top is thickened up. It's bubbling a little bit. I think these things are ready to come off. 
So checking the bottoms, golden brown on the bottom, cooked all the way through. Just a little bit of bubbling going around the edges here. These look great. Pile these up on a plate, perfect for a party, holiday party, or even better yet, kids, maybe Santa would like you to leave a plate of galettes rather than a plate of cookies this year. All right, let's get a taste. Wow, just smells incredible. I know I'm gonna regret this first hot bite, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh. It's hot, but it's delicious. Man, that cinnamon, the apples are tender. I mean, they've got just the tiniest bit of bite. I think we got the timing just right on the cook before and the cook in the grill. Bright citrus, and that dough is just so flaky. I mean, just a pinch and it's flaking apart, but still tender in the middle. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue or barbecue legends are made.